What's going on reef builders? Welcome to part three of what was supposed to be a one day tank move. So if you watched some of our previous videos, we um, broke the stand, an old acrylic stand. That's for the better. Um, in our second part, we uh, told you about kind of an emergency holding trough for um, holding all the livestock and animals and the rocks all at once. And here in this video, we're gonna be building a new stand. We're here at Keeping It Reef. Um, this is one of the stores kind of closest to us. They're still very new, um, but they are very engaged with the local reef aquarium community. There we have my man, David. How's it going? What's up, David, man? How's it going, bud? Thanks for seeing doing? me this morning. Oh, yeah. We're just showing off the store real quick, and we're going to go around to the back and show right. them the workshop. Um, yeah, so, like, so like I said, Keeping It Reef is uh, pretty new. And so they're, you know, in building out their fish tanks, their coral tanks, and uh, just kind of doing everything at once. But one of their claims to fame is uh, they have a workshop, a full-blown workshop back here um, where they build a lot of custom stands and even tanks for the local community. So when I came in this morning, you know, I really thought that this was the kind of stand that we would build. This is the kind of stand I would build with a bunch of two by fours, you know, something pretty easy to slap together. But David showed me kind of one of their styles over here. And this is made from, I guess, a comp composite of birch, right? So can you tell me a little bit about the difference? Um, first about the two by four, like just kind of how this normally goes together and then what you guys are doing, which looks way better. Okay, so with the two by four here, it is basically just put together by screws and it, the top is being supported by the bottom. So this two by four here goes in between both of them and then this one sits on top to create that support. And as you notice, I mean, this is basically built, but it's still, not as strong. And this is kind of like a, a cookie cutter yeah. aquarium stand that people would do. Yeah, this is just a quick, easy route to go. It works, but I wouldn't suggest using it in the long run. Yeah. It's kind of a, just a, a working table right now, huh? Yep. And so show me, tell me a little bit about the style that this is. So then here, everything's glued together. It's fitted. We put in extra braces here in the middle and also on the back here. And then you can't see it on this side, but if you go to the other side, it's also braced up. And the structure of this with the, the paint, this thing will hold up a lot longer than your typical two by four, you know, your home built. I mean, you can sit on this thing. We just built another one that was a uh, custom bow front for a 200 gallon, so. So yeah, this actually kind of surprised me because you're using an, a composite board, but because you use a lot of glue and keep things together, that is incredibly rigid. Yeah. And it looks so cool. I love it with no yeah, doors the nice on front. Thing too is that, I mean, you put together a two by four stand, you're looking at quite a bit of weight. This is really light. One person can move it, so. Okay, so we already kind of discussed what we're gonna do and you feel most comfortable making that, right? Oh yeah. All right, so uh, what do we need to get started and uh, how long are we looking at? I'd say we're looking about six hours um, to get it built and then probably about another day for paint and primer, things like that. So roughly about a two day job to get something like this done. All right, well, I'm glad we're going to uh, tag team it together. Um, I think I can do the painting at home, but uh, we're gonna start the video building process of uh, this style of tank stand. Yep. All right, David, so what's the first thing we need to do to get started on this project? Just gonna start measuring things out, measuring the, the length of the sides, the width, the top, get it all drawn out on here, and then we'll start cutting. Do you have just like a mental checklist of what needs Basically, to happen? Yeah. All right, so I'm just gonna hand you wood, and do you, you explain as much as you can as we're going. Okay. All right. All right, Dave, we got our pieces cut. 
We sanded it down the edges. Can you talk about the sanding of the edges and how important that is? So the reason why we sand edges is to be able to get a good bond between the sides and the bottom because you don't want all the little hairs. Every time you cut a piece of board, you get those you know, hairs off of it because of the blade. We sand it down, make sure everything's clean. That way, once we put it together, we'll end up putting the sides, top and bottom together. We won't do anything else. We'll glue it, nail it together, let it sit. And then once all that's done, then we'll go ahead and start on the back. So in a, in a typical two by four stand, we just screw it together, yep. right? But this is gonna be a little bit different. You're gonna use glue. Yeah, so we're gonna use glue to, to bond the wood pieces together. And then we'll staple, run staples all along down the sides and get our square of our box and then we'll start on the back and front and the braces on the inside. Can you tell us about the pieces that we have so far? So right here we got the, the two tops and then we got the two bottoms. So, so top and bottom, side and side. Yep. So we're just gonna make a we kind of a front and back. We're gonna make an open box. That's how you start. Yep, that's all it is. It's just gonna be just like this. <clears throat> have the other one there and then the top and then we'll get this square. Let it sit for a couple hours, let that glue uh, set and then we'll go on to the back and braces on the inside and the fronts. All right, sounds good, let's get to it. All right, David, we, uh, we've glued up the stand and we're waiting for it to glue, but right now, can you tell us what we're doing? Right now, we're making the support braces for inside of the tank. So basically, we're gonna have them up like this. They're gonna be doubled together and they're gonna be up underneath, considering it's an acrylic tank. We, want it, we don't want it to be bowing right in the middle with the weight. So we're gonna double everything up, staple them together, let these dry, and put more of the stand together. All right, yeah, no, it's already starting to look like something, man. I can't believe this is happening so quickly. Normally you'd, uh, you know, order a stand and wait months, yeah. <laughs> celebrate a birthday, a couple holidays, uh, but no, it's really nice. Oh, to... we try to get them in and out as soon as possible, so. And you do this for lo the local reefers too? Oh yeah. All the time. Do it for everyone. We've actually had a couple we've had to send out too, so. All right. Yeah, I know building stands is always in really high demand. So yeah. I'm glad we could work this out. Yes, I am. All right, David, tell us where we're at right now. So right now we're here, we got a, our box all put together, everything. We ended up putting the, the braces in for the front, 
from top to bottom to give it that extra support from side to side. Now we're getting ready to put these braces in. This is the back of the stand. Yep, this is the back. And this is going to be the top. Yeah. And we're going to put it's tons kind of, of cross bracing. Yeah, so it'll be kind of like this guy here. So it'll sit in here. We'll have so many of them. That way it gives a bunch of support on top to the tank. All right. Well, let's tack them in. braces down at the bottom for the support of the tank down here just like this one but we're gonna run a couple of them probably put one here 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 and so on and so forth so right now we'll set them all down glue them in i'll tack them from the sides and we'll flip it over and i'll tack them up on top awesome so All right, we're getting into the home stretch. David, you want to tell us what's left to do on this tank? All right, guys. Or so sand? Here, we're going to go ahead and put a trim piece here around the front just to clean it up, make it a little nicer. And we're going to add a support right here in the middle on the sides to give it a little more structure. And we're on the home stretch from there. Get a primer and paint and be good. Oh, and then uh, we're also going to put the back in there to hide the little area right there. All right, very cool. How does it look, you guys? How does it look? The stand is completed. And I just wanna say first and foremost that while we were working on the stand, while I was filming it, I was retroactively hearing your comments about how we should have done this or done that. And because we're a little bit of a crunch as far as setting up this tank, we have all the animals in a trough. Um, the biggest, my only priority was uh, structural integrity. And then secondarily is making it, you know, match with the studio and having a big open design like this. I absolutely love it. Um, so I, this is not a word working channel. This is not a finishing or word, wood refinishing channel. So that's why I didn't really show the painting and the sanding of the stand. Um, I know I could have done a better job if I have to done more layers, more sanding. But you know, at the end of the day, um, you know, it's gonna be really blue or, you know, bluish white all around it. And this is gonna be the main event. I really wanna thank um, David from Keeping It Reef for uh, just, I called him up on Friday afternoon. I'm like, hey, can we build a stand tomorrow? And he just showed up and we put it together. At the beginning of the video, you know, I we, we talked about the two by four stand that was fastened together with screws versus this composite stand, which is kind of a high quality uh, plywood, which is glued together and then stapled together. And by staples, we mean kind of long, thin, skinny nails, but they're shot in with a compressor gun. Um, but it, in hindsight, this is actually a really easy tank to build. So if you weren't able to uh, visualize what we did, we basically we built like the simplest box possible, right? So we've got a top, got a bottom, let's put it like this, and then the sides were sandwiched in between. So that was step one, you know, we got 
these two pieces and these two pieces made from the same stuff. Um, you know, if you're stickling for that kind of stuff, make sure the, the grain goes the same direction on both sides. You know, you won't see the bottom or the top. And then as soon as this is set up, um, you know, check it with the square to make sure we're at a good 90 degree angle. And then we took a basically just a piece of a strip right here and tacked it in place to hold it while the glue was setting. And then once the box is finished, it's just basically trim, right? We put trim on the back, which is, has a structural component. Uh, we put, um, it's not really trim, but we put these edge pieces here on the front, a little bit more structural integrity for the front. You saw all the bracing that we put underneath the top, especially important for an acrylic tank that doesn't have any bottom support. Um, a little less critical for a glass tank where all the weight is generally supported around the sides. I guess some of the larger, more custom tanks are also gonna be flat, but they can support themselves on the edges more. And then, you know, everything else is up to personal decision. Like I said, we, um we put these uh, these kind of mid braces here because this was just like a huge span of plywood with all the weight. Um, we didn't want everything to uh, just kind of bow. Um, it, we just didn't want to take any chances, right? We broke one stand and then while you're at it, just no extra work to add an extra brace. But this thing is huge, right? I can't even reach the back. We're gonna have so much room to basically have a medium sized sump and an auto top off because it's a little bit removed from our main system auto top off. Um, but the stand is done, incredibly happy with it. And we have the tank on top. Now, the, now that we have the tank uh, cleaned up, you can see that uh, there's a good amount of, uh, let's just call it weathering and aging that's happened to this acrylic, um, both inside and out. I think there's been some mild buffing done uh, in the past, but not nearly to the degree that the, this tank deserves, especially here along the bottom, right? This is where all the sand and stuff builds up and just 15 years of reef activity here. We got some nice scratches. Um, now, when this is filled with water, you're not gonna see it as much, but then once algae starts growing, they'll grow in the cracks first and that's just gonna be a major pain to clean out. So, don't have all the pieces put together yet, but our next project in this new mini series is gonna be buffing out the acrylic tank. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. Oh, I've never had an acrylic tank. I want a glass tank. It's super clear, um, it's super hard. You can scrape it with a metal blade, but I'll tell you what, brothers and sisters, um, you wanna get a big tank at a fair or free price. Uh, learning how to buff acrylic is one of those ways to pick up a hundreds of gallon aquarium um, for a few hundred bucks or just the work and labor of moving it. So like I said, this is not a word working channel, but virtually all of our stands have to sit or rest on something and predominantly that is going to be a wooden stand that anyone could build at home. Um, more important than the assembly, I think, was the, uh, you know, just getting really straight cuts and really flat edges to butt everything together. So if you wanna make a stand like this yourself, um, I think the material cost on this, we did two four by eight sheets of the plywood birch. Um, and I wanna say they were like 60 to $70 here in Colorado. We know wood prices and stuff has gone through the roof, but uh, stand building is a very important part of reef building. So uh, thank you for joining me on this uh, video journey. I'm sure there's some woodworkers watching right now who could have some tips for us in the future and for our viewers uh, that might be interested in making a stand like this. So please share your experience, share your knowledge. Um, if you enjoy this video, make sure to give it a like, give it a share, and uh, make sure to tune in very soon because we're gonna buff this tank as soon as we can. And uh, because once the tank is buffed, we get to refurbish and rebuild all the equipment from top to bottom and just talk about all the improvements. And then after that, we're gonna be able to, you know, manicure the rock and get it in here. And this is just gonna keep going as fast as we can. So it's been a very unexpected journey to bring to you guys. Thanks for joining along and uh, big thanks to cameraman and editor Evan for, uh, you know, really kind of grinding it out these last few days. I want to thank um, David 
Wellman, I think his name is, his last name. David, thank you so much, man, you're a lifesaver. This stand came out awesome. If he did it from start to finish, I, I think the paint job would look a lot better. But uh, do you have any needs for, you know, unique or kind of a uh, you know, short-term tank building? Make sure to reach out to Keep It At Reef in, um, I think they're in Litton, Littleton, Colorado. Um, they did a great job and we can't wait to put it to you. So until next time, we'll have another part to this uh, video series coming up very soon and we'll see you on the next one. Later guys.